Hello everyone, my name is Greg Tatum, and I'm going to give a demonstration of the basic usage of the Firefox Profiler. So to start, you can go to profiler.firefox.com, and any links that I mention here, I will provide below in the comments. Uh, and so uh, you can go here, and this is the uh, web application that uh, lets you view and analyze profiler, profiles from the Firefox Profiler. Uh, and to start with, I will do a basic usage demo to show off how to actually uh, go about using this. Um, so if I actually remove it from the toolbar first, I can go through the full thing. So profiler.firefox.com. There is a button here to enable the uh, profiler menu button. So I will go ahead and do that. And it shows up here and it opens by default uh, with the menu that gives you the options. So if I want to profile something, Go ahead and close this. And what I can do is I can click this little triangle and choose my setting that I want to do. Here I want to do a platform focused uh, recording, which will include C++ and different things like that. Uh, it'll give a description here about each of the different settings. And I will start recording. What you'll notice is that this icon turns blue. And now I can go to a web page and have something that happens. And then what I can do from there is, uh, all I have to do is click the button right there, and it will open up the profiler. And you can see here, I have the screenshot showing what's happening on the page. I have the apparent process, the uh, web content process, and all the different information associated with it. And one of the key things to kind of remember here is that, uh, Shortcuts are the best way to do this. Uh, so I just gave the demo showing how to click the UI and uh, go through the menus to do it. Uh, but if you're doing a lot of recording, uh, make sure and use the, the shortcuts because then you won't get um, the UI updating as part of, the, of what you're recording. So let's start to tour the UI. First off, as you kind of saw as I was doing the demo, there are a lot of colors that uh, show up in uh, the profiler. So it looks like a crazy painting, but I'm gonna break it down so that it's not so intimidating. So take a deep breath first, and we'll, we'll dive into it. There are so many colors. Uh, okay, here's the breakdown. The timeline is the area at the top. So uh, once you're dealing with that, uh, you can kind of use it to show the uh, threads and other track information and you'll get an overview of what's happening um, with the profile. The details view is down below. So this is if you're diving into all the details of the video and what's going on. So let's look at the thread track. It is the data dense view into a thread. So a program that's running will have many different threads going on at the same time, threads of execution that are happening in parallel. So the profiler is really good at showing how those happen at the same time. And so one of these lines shows a data dense view into that thread. Lots of colors, uh, lots of squiggly lines, but it, they're there to give you a quick overview of, of what the thread is doing. Uh, another very useful track uh, is the screenshot track. And you can see exactly what is going on when you load a page and see how it changes over time as you hover it. Uh, tracks are grouped by process. So what that means is when there's a single process, there's lots of threads of the execution in it and uh, they're grouped hierarchically. So you can see this web content is the, the main thread of the parent process and then whatever else, what other tracks are for that specific process. So you can analyze it from there. And each process almost acts like a separate program that's executing at the same time. A big tip whenever you're interacting with the profiler is hover over everything. If you see here, there's this curious bit of orange color. So with a little red dot over it, if I hover over it, I get the stack of what's happening and I get a category which is showing, showing GC and CC, which means garbage collection um, is happening at this moment. Uh, 
the profiler, what it's really good at and what the front end of it is doing is it's collecting and displaying information. So what kind of information is collected and displayed in the profiler? There are two main types. Uh, there are some others that, that get, get involved, but these are the, the bread and butter of the profiler. There are samples and markers. So what does that mean? First, I'll dive into samples and just be warned, there's some graph theory ahead and it's not, not necessarily gonna show you how to use the profiler, but it'll give you a base understanding of the data that you're looking at. Um, I'm gonna go hide, ahead and hide myself. Samples are gathered over time. So what that means is that here for one millisecond, there's a sample taken of a stack. So the stack is this function A calls function B, calls function C, calls function D, calls function E. Now E is the actual function that's running. Um, and then G runs here when this sample is taken one millisecond la later, then G, and then more and more samples are taken over time. Now, if you have 10,000 samples, that is not a useful thing to be able to analyze by looking at all of them. So you have to um, summarize it. And the structure that you do that with is the call tree. This diagram shows a simplified version of a call tree. So taking a similar diagram as before with these five samples here, each I'm happening at one millisecond. Uh, here you have A calls B calls C, and finally do work is where the work is actually being done. Now if you combine all those together, you can see this A calls B calls C is calls do work. And the running time for all of these are five milliseconds. That's how long these samples, these samples ran. What's interesting to look at here is the self time. The self time is the only parameter that changes across this tree that, that is formed. And the self time for the last sample is five milliseconds because that was what was actually doing the work. That's where the self, um, self time was. Now we can change that if we take these five samples and only do work in three of them here at two, three, and four. Now there's three samples of do work and two samples of uh, B. Looking at our call tree here on the right, you can see B now has a self time of two milliseconds and do work has a self time of three milliseconds. In reality, call trees are more complicated than just a single um, function call stack. So here's an example of how you would take a large collection of samples and then form them into a call tree. Zooming in on three of them, here A is shared across all three samples and B is shared across all three samples. The first branching happens when what B calls. B calls C and H and then further down they continue to call things. And you can see on the far right how this ends up turning into a tree structure. Now, this is about what function called the next. If you notice F here does not form a single call node, even though it's at the same depth, like B, they are part of different branches as you go down. So that's some graph theory. Let's look at how that dis gets displayed in the profiler. So you have the details view down below um, when you select a thread from up top. Uh, and the samples based views are the call tree, the flame graph and the stack chart and the marker based views are the marker chart, marker table and network uh, panel. The call tree view is showing the, the call tree data structure that I just described before and each row pertains to a node on the graph or a call node. Um, it summarizes the total execution time. So given this data structure that we saw before, what's highlighted is a single row and you can see the running time and the self time associated with that. Uh, so rather than being um, kind of a, a directed graph like you see in, in this uh, diagram, it is a, a row structure that you can open and examine that way, but it is essentially a tree. Uh, the analysis is completely presented in a table. Uh, here you can see the running time on the left, which is, has percentages and 
the total milliseconds, and on the right is the self time in milliseconds. And the stack depth is represented as uh, collapsible rows. So the further down you go, uh, each row pertains to um, one item in that in the stack. And uh, here you can see this set constructor init has two child items, so this is actually a branching area. One useful uh, feature in the call tree is the invert call stack. This takes that tree structure and turns it upside down so that the rootmost items on it are where all the self time is. If you'll notice in this graph, the running time and self time all match up completely. So this is a useful way to see, um, in this example, uh, time is actually being spent executing a regex. And that's, that's um, if I wanted to optimize something, it would either make that regex faster or don't call that regex. The flame graph is a visual version of the call tree uh, where the horizontal axis, let me peek ahead, uh, the horizontal axis represents the percentage of time that it executed and the vertical axis represents the depth of the stack. Um, and again, it summarizes the total execution time visually. And repeating myself here with the actual slide in place, the percentage of total samples taken is horizontal and stack depth goes up, um, showing um, how just how deep the stack is. And actually one thing, I'll, I'm gonna go back, one thing I will call out is that uh, one thing not to get confused with is the area of the graph doesn't represent work done, just the horizontal bit of it. So it, um, sometimes something that has a lot of stack depth can seem to be taking more time when in reality it's something else that is actually creating work. Again, uh, the useful tip of hovering over everything applies here. If you hover over the flame graph, it shows you what the current information is for that call node. And here, the purple color, uh, you can find the meaning of it uh, by looking at the tooltip, and it is the category layout. Now, these colors are used all throughout the tools. Uh, there are uh, you can see this purple now, it's this gray other category goes into the uh, purple here. And so it's something that when you go throughout the entire UI, you'll be able to find um, that consistent usage here. And if you're ever confused on the color, hover and it should show you in the tooltip of what that color is meaning. The stack chart is another view that is similar to the flame graph but instead of showing um, total summarized time, uh, it's a timeline instead, not a summary. The time goes from left to right as the horizontal axis, and then the stack depth grows down, uh, which is a visual indicator that this, this graph means something different than the flame graph, and it matches other tools where flame graphs, um, the, in, uh, for instance, Linux perf, show the graphs growing up. In other profiling tools, the stack charts a lot of times will grow down. So it is a visual indicator of the difference. Uh, in this view, samples are used to deduce a tracing timeline, but in reality, the data under underneath it is, is sampled. So a big caveat is this approach is not perfect. Uh, here's an example at the top you can see there's a big gap in the samples that are that are being taken in the uh, timeline. But the details view for the stack chart, you can see the socket pair looks like it took a lot of time executing, but in reality there was a gap in, in time, and so maybe something else was happening there. Maybe the operating system called into the kernel and the application was paused. So uh, this is useful to get oriented, but care should be taken not to misinterpret this data. Okay, so that's the overview of a lot of stuff that's going on here, and we'll move over into live demo time. So here, as, as we were stating before, uh, this top view, which you can kind of drag and move around, is the, the timeline, and there are different things going on. So here, since this is a hierarchy, we see two processes. So there's the parent process and a web content process. From here, 
I can right click this parent process and adjust which information I find useful to see. And I can do the same thing for the web content process as well. Now, and it, if you want to see everything at once, uh, this web content one of two, if I click that, if you notice, it is idle during this. There's nothing going on here. And so the profiler hit it by default. So I will go back and toggle that back off. And let's look at the compositor with this. If I click here, you can see that um, there's work that's being done right here. This is, there's no, nothing in the graph, so this is probably idle time. But it looks like the web, con web content process was purple here, which is layout. So even though the parent process is not doing anything, the web content is laying out. So in terms of looking at parallel behavior, you can see where idleness is happening and where work is happening and how that work um, is, is going together. If I'm interested in a certain time slice, I can highlight it. So if you notice this flame graph is readjusting based off of how much I'm highlighting here. Uh, this is a useful way to find to hone in on an area and understand it. And if you're curious about the ordering of these functions, they're ordered alphabetically. So as I change the time scale, my graph is stable in the way that things lay out. So I'll go ahead and zoom in on this to commit this. And what you'll find is up here, uh, I can continue to add on to my selections to zoom in to, oops, I clicked the wrong button. Click, it'll zoom in into the area that you're interested in. You can see the total um, time that that is. If you want to go back, you can click further back and, and pop back out. Um, and then as you're doing analysis, you can move back and forth through the details views, through the flame graph, through the call tree to get a sense of uh, what is going on in the application. Oh, and, and here's the invert call stack button, um, which will show me all of my self time uh, for what is going on. Uh, so here's a sys call. I'm spending a lot of time doing that. Uh, here's locking a mutex. I actually am, am doing that quite a bit and spending some time there. So you can start to see um, where time, where you can look to start to optimizing things. Um, I guess I don't have a wrap up slide, so I'll drag myself back over here. Uh, so yeah, thanks for taking the time to look at this demo um, of the Firefox profiler. Uh, this is kind of an introductory uh, look into just getting oriented and understanding what the data what data looks like. Um, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and segue back over to the my demo and look at the markers because we didn't actually do that. So the markers are specific points in time, and I'm going to zoom into an area. So here you can see a DOM event, a DOM load event here. I'm going to go to the web content process. Uh, none of these look very interesting. Uh, but these are specific events that, have, that happened uh, while the profiler was running. So they can help you get oriented and know the specific time. So here's a display list uh, being built. And it took 5.1 milliseconds. Uh, and I can zoom into this area to get a better breakdown of these times. So here's a re refresh driver tick and a display list. And you can see the specific ordering and points in time. So you can see this kind of nice uh, behavior of what's going on, on with it. Uh, and the marker table will give that in a uh, more of a table view of what you want to look at. And the network is empty here. If I zoom out, you can see that there are um, let me zoom out more. Not a lot interesting going on network-wise, but there's two different uh, network loads here um, showing that the Wikipedia cats page is being uh, loaded and when those happen. So it's another useful place that you, you can look. Uh, 
So with that, I'll do the final wrap up. Uh, yeah, so thanks for looking at this. I'm going to do a follow-up of the more advanced features of the profiler and go through all of those uh, so that you can hopefully get a better idea of, of how to work with these tools and diagnose your performance problems. Um, again, check out the links below if you want to find uh, links of where you can go to find out more information with the docs and the actual tool and get started with your profiling. So thank you very much.